Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, here with some post-fight comments on Brandon Rios' victory over Richard Abril. Now, before I go further, let's talk about my scoring philosophy, because there are times when I watch a fight and I disagree with the judges by a wide margin. Longtime viewers may recall that a couple years ago, I picked Carl Frotch to beat Andre Durrell. Then the fight happened. Carl Frotch was awarded the decision. I then came online with a post-fight video where I said that um, even though I had picked Frotch to win, I was wrong in the prediction because, in my opinion, he had been outboxed by Andre Durrell, who got robbed. Viewers may also remember that right after the uh, Robert Hellenius, Derek Chisora decision was announced, I um, came online before CompuBox numbers were distributed, and I said that I thought that fight was a complete farce, that I had Chisora winning that fight by a wide margin, in fact, people who were on my chat page online here on YouTube saw my real-time scoring and knew that with several rounds to go, I thought Hellenius needed a knockout to win that fight. So I'm in an odd situation here because I, on my premium site, Dwyer VIP, predicted that Brandon Rios would win this fight. My prediction was that Richard Abril didn't have the big-time punching power that Brandon Rios had, that Rios was a shade shorter than Abril, knew how to fight inside, and that there would be times in the fight when Brandon Rios would be inside on Abril and would have access to Abril's body. And I thought Brandon Rios, at those times, would be able to assert some superiority, would wear down the taller Abril's body. Abril is skinnier than Brandon Rios. So I was expecting a Brandon Rios victory. Well, let's just put it this way. I saw the fight today, after it happened. I read some interviews before I saw the fight. In one interview, Richard Abril said that he had thought that he won the fight by four or five rounds. I'm going to disagree with Richard Abril. I actually believe that he won the fight by much more than that. Let's talk about scoring philosophy. In my opinion, a fighter can win a fight one of two ways. He can just have the more dazzling offense than his opponent. He could just literally outpunch his opponent. Or he could have the superior defense and literally completely negate everything his opponent is trying to do, make his opponent look amateurish by showing that he has outthought the opponent, right? Before the opponent throws a hook, he's prepared for it. When the opponent tries to bully him, he's prepared for it, right? If a guy is magnificent defensively, if he looks like Pernell Whitaker, and he completely disarms an opponent, lands some clean shots, and completely prevents the opponent from doing anything meaningful, then I believe that the defensive wizard has won the fight. In fact, when I see around and one guy is trying to land punches and they're being smothered strategically by an opponent who's controlling tempo, who's controlling distance, who's having his way in the ring, the fight is going the way he wants then in my opinion, it's not even close. The defensive fighter has won. Now here, 
and and it's it's dicey because I had predicted on a pay site that Rios would win the fight. Here, I did not give Brandon Rios any of the first eight rounds of this fight. I thought that Richard Abril was having his way and was so defensively superior in the fight that I did not see where Brandon Rios had any advantage whatsoever. Let's go further. Brandon Rios looked so limited and so exposed that against a technician, you know, against a Juan Manuel Marquez, I believe that fight would be a mismatch. I don't see how Brandon Rios would even be competitive. He would have to relearn the sport and come up with something new to even be able to participate in the match. Let's talk about why. And uh, there were a few times you see a fight where a fighter is completely undressed. I haven't seen a fighter completely undressed like this in quite some time. Tavares Cloud got pretty undressed by Gabriel Campillo. I thought this was even worse, right? Let's talk about defensive strategy. Some fighters move. They try to run. They try to stay outside what you're doing, right? You're shooting a jab, they're outside of it. You're throwing hooks, they're outside of it, right? Think Jean Pascal. Think Manny Pacquiao, right? These are guys who move. When I say an ambush fighter, an ambush fighter's outside. He's hiding, right? Then, of course, he jumps in, throws a flurry, then he's back outside. That seems to be increasingly popular these days. A guy like a Brandon Rios can hunt down that kind of fighter, right? The guy's already outside running. Brandon Rios can literally cut off the ring, find that guy, right? It's the Joe Lewis philosophy. He can run, but he can't hide, right? The guy who's outside, Brandon Rios, is going to try to hunt that person down. Well, what happens if the fighter takes a different tact and has such defensive mastery that he doesn't have to run? In fact, what happens if the fighter changes the dynamic and says, hey, I don't want to run from Brandon Rios. I want him to find me. In fact, I'm going to smother his punches. Right? This is kind of like Bernard Hopkins smothering Felix Trinidad's left hook. What Richard Abril does is a move Floyd Mayweather does. You come up on them, they stand their ground. When you look at the film of this fight, and it's up on YouTube, you're going to see that Brandon Rios comes up on Richard Abril who's going nowhere. Abril only moves to establish his feet. Abril stands his ground and when Rios comes up and throws a left hook, Abril, who's a righty, literally has it blocked. That left hook hits Abril's forearm more than it hits anything else. Inside the fight is a mismatch. Abril knows that Rios throws his punches too wide. He has them blocked. He has them blocked to the point where he's looking at Rios. And it looks like he's wondering, 
if Rios has anything else to offer. And he doesn't. Right? Rios looks so bad that Abril knows exactly where Rios is. There's no cat and mouse game. Rios is just walking in. Even Michael Casitas against Mensa hit his intentions better than Brandon Rios is. Right? Rios is literally just walking in. Abril is the one who steps forward and smothers the punches. Right? This isn't good defense. This is a plus defense. I mean, the defense is so good that I'm saving the link to this video just so I can remind myself how a fighter can completely smother hooks. Right? Rios looks like an amateur for at least the first eight rounds of this fight. Rich Morata is one of the commentators on Morata's card, and Morata's been around a long time. He disagrees with me. He actually gave Rios the third round. So in the first eight rounds, he gives Rios the third round. I believe he might have given Rios the eighth round. I'm just telling you on my scorecard, after eight, it's 8-0. Eight -oh. And don't think the end of the fight is much different. Right? There are a few rounds toward the end that might have been draws. But I would really have to stretch my imagination to give Brandon Rios even four rounds in this fight. That's a reach. Right? Brandon Rios gets completely owned. Let me also point out too that Bob Arum, after this fight, Rios' promoter, was lamenting the fact that the referee didn't deduct points from a brill. Why would the referee deduct points from a brill? He's blocking shots. He's not even excessively holding Brandon Rios. He's just tying up Rios. He's not even holding him. Rios comes in. Abril knows that Rios' bread and butter is a wide left hook. And so Abril literally is leaning on his other hand, his right hand, so Rios can't do anything with it. Right? You literally see Abril at times come forward and lean on that right hand. Then when Rios throws the left, Abril just goes like this. Has it blocked. It's masterful. It's beautiful. Quite frankly, Abril should have gotten the belt. Right? He certainly earned the belt in the ring. Right? This decision is one of the worst decisions I have seen in my life. And let me just say that I know I picked Rios and I know Dwyer VIP people collected on the fight, right? But I was wrong on this fight. This was not what I expected. All I can say is, you know, Juan Manuel Marquez is eager to fight Brandon Rios for a reason. It's because he knows it's an easy fight. If he was able to block Manny Pacquiao's left hand, right, and Pacquiao throws a faster, straighter left hand than Brandon Rios, you can only imagine how easy it's going to be for him to block Brandon Rios's left hand. Let me also say this too. Before I get emails saying that Abril didn't do enough to win the fight, you've got to be kidding me. He owns Brandon Rios defensively, and he throws straight hands that pop Rios. He lands, in my opinion, much more quality shots. I mean, much more quality shots than Brandon Rios lands during the fight. Late in the fight, Rios, who clearly is not a master at making adjustments, starts to shorten his left hand a bit and he starts to land somewhat with that left hand 
But understand, even those rounds, if you look at the quality punches, most of the quality punches are being thrown by Richard Abril. And certainly, in terms of skill level, it's not close. Abril is the one playing angle and distance games, right? I mean, literally, there are moments where Abril comes up and leans on Rios. I mean, you literally see Abril leaning forward on Rios. So when Rios throws punches, Abril has them smothered. Take a look at Rios's right hand, completely smothered or blocked. Take a look at Rios's left hand. And Rios isn't a guy who knows how to take a step back. Use that lean against Abril. Have Abril stumbling forward. A better fighter, a Ray Leonard, would have leaned back and then would have strategically leaned away, had Abril stumble forward, and literally would know exactly where he's going to be for a left hook. Have him walk into a left hook or a right hook, right? As the guy's stumbling, you throw it as the guy stumbles by you. And, of course, when Rios gets inside, unfortunately, he's not Mike Tyson, right? If you have a hook up top block, a guy like a Mike Tyson or an Andre Ward who's excellent inside would rip apart your rib cage, would throw body punches, would hit you in the solar plexus, right? You know, a Joe Fraser, you would literally have to lean on the back of his neck to prevent him from tearing you up inside. Brandon Rios apparently can only hit you with a wide left hand inside. His right hand can be negated just by leaning on him. I thought he was completely exposed. Now I made a video earlier where I made the argument that Yorkeese Gamboa had a real shot of beating Brandon Rios. Right? I'm just here to say that I just don't see how a fighter who looked this bad and this limited has any prayer against Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? And so I thought that Abril won this fight I thought that Brandon Rios embarrassed himself, right? Realistically, I think a realistic scorecard on this fight would have been a brill 10 rounds to two, nine to three, right? There's, there's no way, I believe, that a judge with a straight face can say that Richard Abril lost this fight. Certainly wasn't what I was expecting I'll concede that I picked Brandon Rios before the fight. Let's just say that my subscribers lucked out on this one because he certainly didn't win the fight, or at least he didn't deserve to win. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. I know Rios is popular. I know his trainer is popular. I know his promoter is popular. I know the Rios crowd is out in force online. A lot of people like his attitude. He has won some big fights. No question against it. Particularly the fight against Anthony Peterson. I'm not saying he completely lacks talent. What I'm saying is he's very limited. And if you know what he's going to do, particularly at the championship level, you can make him look as bad as Richard Abril did. I thought Abril fought a masterful fight. I'm surprised that it's getting any criticism in the press or is being called ugly. Quite frankly, if Floyd Mayweather fights this kind of fight against Miguel Cotto, he'll be very fortunate and will be saluting and congratulating him on a masterful performance. Well, Richard Abril just threw down that level of performance here. Completely negated Brandon Rios's left hand. I encourage everyone to look at the fight, not just because of the controversy, but also because of the great defensive skill level. It's worth a look. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I'm not afraid to say when I'm wrong, even when the judges give my pick the win. Thanks for watching.